All right, welcome back to topic 18, um, part two. In this video, let's take a look at how we can find the zeros of a polynomial function by factoring, okay? By factoring. So remember, there are three ways, you know, we can find the zeros by factoring, by graphing, and then there's another ultimate way, okay? When the factoring and graphing fails. But let's take a look at by graphing, by, by factoring. If I can factor it, then that's not necessarily means I can find the solution on the graphing calculator because some of, sometimes these zeros could be a, um, a fraction answer, okay? Remember our table on the graphing calculator is set up to be integer based, okay? So it is good to actually be able to factor some of these polynomial functions. All right, so I kind of broke this down into steps. So here is a polynomial function. Let's factor out the greatest common factor because there is a greatest common factor here. So for my function f of x, I can factor out, uh, I believe, I, oops, excuse me, I believe I can factor out an x. Oops, too far. Oh, come on. Oops. There you go. Once I factor out x, then what should be left should be x squared minus 2x. All right, be careful now. x going to positive x is positive one time. Okay, a lot of a lot of students just left this last term out. Whatever you factor out, however many terms the polynomial function has, you know, after the greatest common factor, you should still have the same number of terms. All right, let's factor um, the trinomial inside the parentheses. I believe this is a perfect square binomial in here. So I'm gonna treat it like a trinomial. For x squared, I'll use one and one or x and x. Last term is one. <laughs> All right, since the last sign is positive, the sign for the two parentheses should be the same, either plus plus or minus minus. To end up with a negative two in the middle, I need negative one on the outer and negative one in the inner. All right. Now, I'm going to come back and rewrite this too. I'm going to rewrite this answer just a little bit, okay? S number three, set the function equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to set this entire function equal to zero, then set each factor equal to zero. So set the function equal to zero means replace f of x with zero. I'm gonna set each factor equal to zero. Okay, what that mean is the factor that in, that contains your variable x. So this factor, this is a factor. All right, this is a factor that I factored out earlier. It contains my variable, so I set equal to zero. These two are exactly the same. X minus one are exactly the same. I just need to do one of them. So that would just be set one of the two X minus one equal to zero. Solve for X. So move the negative one over. Oh, well, that's next step. This step just want you to set each factor equal to zero. All right, find the X in the set by solving for X. So remember one of my X is already equal to zero. So what that means is the x intercept means find x when the y is zero. The other factor, solve for x, move the negative one over. So the other x intercept will be one comma zero. So I got two x intercept here. By looking at the degree of the polynomial, I should have three zeros. Okay, I should have three zeros. The reason why I only have two of them because two of my factors were the same, okay? And the reason is the multiplicity. So if I will go back to number two and rewrite this answer, since the two x minus one are the same, that means I can write the two x minus one as x minus one whole thing squared. So state the multiplicity of each x intercept. So for the x intercept, x equal um, for the x intercept zero zero. All 
the multiplicity, which is the exponent on the factor, the exponent on the factor of the polynomial function. You don't see one, so that means it's automatically x to the first power. The other x-intercept, one comma zero. If you look on, if you look at the exponents of the factors that where that one comma zero come from, that exponent is two. So the multiplicity is two. When you add up the multiplicity, it should always equal up to the degree of the polynomial. So that tells me that even though I suppose have three zeros, because one of my zero or, or one of my x-intercept has multiplicity of two, then it adds up to be multiplicity of three or three zeros. All right, number six. Below each multiplicity, state the graph will cross or turn at the x-axis. So below the multiplicity one, since one is an odd number, that means it will cross. Below the multiplicity two, since two is an even, that tells me that my graph will actually turn, okay? So I got one cross, one turn. Crossing at zero, zero, turn, my graph will turn at one comma zero. All right, find the y-intercept. I'm gonna go back up to the top. Right, I'm going to move this over real quick so I still see my function. Find the y-intercept means find the y-value. when the x is zero. All right, if I substitute zero for all my x's, f of zero equal to zero to the third minus two times zero squared plus zero. So everything becomes zero, right? So my y-intercept is also at zero, zero. So let's graph this, okay? Let's graph this by hand. Plot the x-intercepts. All right, so this is where the leading term test can come in. Remember the degree of the polynomial is three. Leading coefficient is positive one. So it will be scribble, 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 right side goes up, left side goes down. This is what approximately what the graph should look like. The scribble part is what's happening around the x-axis. So we know the x-intercepts are zero, zero, in one zero. All right. If I will apply the leading term test and the multiplicity, okay, by logic, by logic, I know I I know this zero zero is my leftmost x-intercept. And I know my left side should be coming from negative infinity, coming from down up, coming from coming down here. So it naturally you you will you will say, okay, the graph must look like this way, coming up, cross over, you have to cross over the zero, zero. Why? Because the multiplicity earlier we already said is one. So the graph will cross it. And then once it cross over that x-intercept, it got to turn towards the other x-intercept. But once you get to the other x-intercept, one comma zero, since the multiplicity was even, it will naturally have to turn. So coming from down, you got to cross. Oh, this is bad. This is ugly. It has to cross the zero, zero because multiplicity was odd. Then curving towards one, zero. And then once you reach one, zero, you have to curve back up. Okay, you have to turn because it never crossed at one zero. It actually turned at one zero. So the graph should look something like this. 
So if I put, if I go to my graphing calculator, x to the third minus 2x squared plus x, I kind of know ahead of time what my picture is going to look like. So it cross, see, you can't even see what's happening right here, right? It doesn't look much right here. So if I will go to my window and I will narrow, and I will squeeze my x-axis all the way from negative two to positive two. My y-axis, I'm gonna do the same thing, negative two to positive two. I'm gonna squeeze it in real tight and see what's happening. Cross and it barely hover over, right? barely hover over, then he actually turned at one zero. So this point is one zero, that's zero, zero. So a lot of time, just by graphing in the graphing calculator, it might, it might not show me exactly what's really going on. Okay, that's why I do want to um, show you how to actually do this by hand. So I'm gonna take a picture of this real quick and then just put it right beside it. Okay, so that kind of tell you what's happening. Crossover, hover barely over it. So my little, my little sketch, you know, is not quite as accurate because it's kind of tight. I want to make sure you, you see me cross over and then what? and then turn towards the other zero, zero or X and S F and then turn up again. All right, let's try another one, okay? This is X to the fourth. Find out the greatest common factor if there is one. So there is a greatest common factor between these four terms, which is X. So my F of X is equal to, factor, once I factor out X, Uh, I should end up with x to the third minus 5x squared minus x plus 5. All right, number two, fact out the greatest common factor between the first two and the last two terms within the parentheses. So within the parentheses, this is actually a factoring by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two and group the last two. All right, be careful, okay? F of x, right? My greatest common factor, x is still up front times. The greatest common factor between the first two terms in the parentheses is x squared. Factor that out, then you should end up with x minus five, right? Greatest common factor between those two. Greatest common factor between negative x and positive five should be negative one. Once I factor that out, that should be x minus five, right? Negative one going to positive is negative five. All right, so number two, just want me to factor out the greatest common factor between the first two and the last two. Number three, there should be two terms inside the parentheses. Right, subtraction sign here, there are two terms inside the parentheses. Factor out the greatest common factor again. So that means f of x is now equal to greatest common factor x is still up front. All right, if I factor out the greatest common factor again, that should give me x minus five, right? Times x squared minus one. So if I check inside the parentheses again, I see this is a difference of square. So number four, tell me to factor the difference of square. So my greatest common factor earlier, x is still x, the x minus five I just come up with. Now the difference of squares should give me x plus one times x minus one. All right, so I factor it completely. Set the function equal to zero and then set each factor equal to zero. So zero equals x times x minus five, x plus one, x minus one. Then I'm gonna set each factor equal to zero. The greatest common factor x is a factor that contains a variable, so I set equal to zero. X minus five set equal to zero. X plus one set equal to zero. And X minus one set equal to zero. Number six, 
find the x-intercept by solving for x. So the first one, x equal to zero, that tell me that x-intercept should be zero, zero, right? X-intercept, find x when y is automatically zero. Second one, if I move my negative five over, then x is equal to five. So my, the other x-intercept is five comma zero. Move the positive one over, x equal to negative one, negative one comma zero is another x intercept. Move the negative one over, x is equal to positive one. So one comma zero is the other x intercept. So I got four x intercepts. Number seven, state the multiplicity of each x intercepts. All right, so if you look at the exponents, look on the exponent for each one of these factor, they're all going to be one. All right, so for zero, zero, multiplicity is one, five comma zero, multiplicity is one, negative one, zero, multiplicity is one, one, zero, multiplicity is one. <laughs> Number eight, below each multiplicity, state the graph will either cross or turn. So since all the multiplicity is odd, that means my function will cross. Right, my graph will cross at all these x-intercepts. All right, find the y-intercept. So if you look back on the function to find the y-intercept, Substitute zero for x, right? Y in the set means find the y when x are zero. So if you put, plug in zero for all these into the function, then the y in the set will be zero, zero again. All right, so let me graph, okay? Plot the x in the set, y in the set. I know I have a zero, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, and I believe a positive five, zero. All right. If you're looking back at the function, x to the fourth power, x to the fourth power. x to the fourth power. So the degree, so the exponent is even. The leading coefficient is positive. So all of the lead by the leading term test, the four scenario we have, my graph should look something like scribble, 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 right side goes up, left side goes up. So the rightmost x intercept after the after the graph cross over it will go up all right the leftmost same thing it will cross over so if i would draw this picture from left to the right coming from negative infinity right coming from very very left once i get to negative one zero i cross it once i cross it i gotta turn towards here cross it cross it and then somehow cross it again at five zero Okay, you just cross, cross, cross over, and then turn towards it, and then so you can cross. So this is as good of a sketch as we can make without finding other additional points. Okay, so the idea is, the idea here is kind of know what the picture looks like before we even graph it. Okay, so you kind of have an idea once you're actually looking at the, the, the function, you know, you know it's a correct, you know what you're looking at. So let me graph real quick. X to the fourth minus five X to the third minus X squared plus five X. All right, once I graph it, uh, I'm gonna go back to the standard window. All right, cross, 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 and cross at five. Zoom number six, go back to standard window. Cross, 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 cross back. 
Okay, so this part is actually way down. You know what I'm saying? That right side is supposed to be a little bit, dip a little bit lower. But at least I know what I'm doing is correct. Cross, 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 and then come up. There you go, something like that. All right, so when you sketch this on the homework, it don't have to be perfect. It just, the idea is kind of, kind of know what the picture should look like based on the multiplicity. All right, so that will conclude this part two of topic 18.